I got another cool problem, a very cool problem here, which is kind of a generalization of the uh, two variable ASHME. You guys, it's this is the American. Uh, let's see, what does it stand for? Uh, I think H. Yeah, I call it Ash ASHME. And I know that the last three letters stand for high school math examination. But anyway, way back in 1996, they had a two variable problem like this. That I, what I've done is I've extended it to three variables. Let's see, 1996, and I'm looking right now, this was problem 25. This is number 25, problem number 25, I believe. I checked my records on that, but I think that's right. Okay. Now, again, the problem back then dealt with uh, just two variables, X and Y, and the constraint also was a two variable linear constraint. And one way to interpret the problem was for the two variable case to think of it as a circle and a line. And then I think it, the, where the line was tangent to the circle, that would help you determine when this expression achieved its minimum value. But now that we have three variables, I think it's going to be a sphere and a plane, right? So. But I didn't worry about that. I don't even know if I could do that. But I, what it, this falls right into the lap of the Cauchy-Schwartz inequality, which is what I used. Okay. Now, right up here is a statement of the Cauchy-Schwartz inequality. And, and this is a powerful inequality in the sense that you're using these can, can be any real number at all. In some cases, like for the arithmetic mean geometric mean inequality, you, you have to, the variables have to be positive or non-negative at least. Here, the variables can take on any value at all, and, and, and this holds. The, the proof of this is cool, by the way. You, you construct a certain, a carefully construct a, a function of x, it turns out, and then you, you set the discriminant less than or equal to zero because the function is always positive or non-negative, shall I say. It's really cool how it falls out. The discriminant of a quadratic actually proves this. But in any event, let's just go ahead and take it as a fact right now. Now, in this context right here, there's, there's a nice ring to this you can almost see the pattern right here this is what happens when you apply the cauchy schwartz you guys can see here one x five y seven z right then over here they just get separated into squares on their own basically this is i think what they call the square of the inner product and this is the square of the product of the magnitudes i think if you thought of these as vectors okay but in any event notice i put the one dot x to to let you know that it, it still it played a role some people will leave this out i don't like it when people are trying to learn it then all of a sudden the one pops up over here you know but in any event just to, if, if you don't see what's going see what's going on here this this one would be behaving like your u sub one okay then the x the x would be v sub one Okay, then of course the five would be your u sub two. Subscripted variables are the way to go on this. Other. You don't want a bunch of different letters here. And then you have a v sub two. Finally, right here, I'm not going to go any further than this, but you would have u sub three. Times uh, v sub three. Now, maybe this is being overly formal, but that plays right into the hands of the Cauchy. Uh, Schwartz inequality and again right here notice that we're dealing with the case n equals three here okay, n equals three this um this ashme competition that it was just n equals two okay now uh now i i, I actually created this problem and i, I made the, this strange constraint on purpose because i just knew the numbers would work out nice to be a rational but anyway, uh, you guys can, th this part is definitely true. I won't fill in the rest of it, but the pattern here is really something that, that's quite mnemonic, I think. You can remember this without having to bring this up every time, I think. Now, so notice what we're trying to do. We're actually trying to minimize x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So what we have right here is just x squared plus y squared plus z squared without the square root, right? So <clears throat> what I did, of course, is just divide through by this information here, this, this, this piece right here, I just divided through, we wrote it like this. Now it turns out that these uh, three squares um, add up to 75. This is 49 plus what, uh, 25 plus one, which adds up to, doesn't that add up to 75? I think it does, yeah. 49 plus 25 is 74 plus one is 75, right? Okay. Now notice uh, we actually, the given part right here, uh, this part would be the square root of three, but it gets squared, right? 
So you actually have three over 75 right here. If, if you if you take a look at this given. Okay. If you put this given in right here, you're going to square the square root of three. I designed it so it would work out nicely. And so this will be three over 75, but then you have to apply the square root to both sides to get what we want, right? And so uh, it's interesting to know right here that the square root of 75 is just the same as uh, 5 root 3, right? And that's what makes it fly. 5 root 3 is what you get uh, when you uh, take the square root of the biggest square in there. And of course, the root three and the root three cancel, leaving this one over five that you see right here. Okay. All right, y'all. And um, so that would be your lowest bound. In fact, this would be what they would call a GLB, a greatest lower bound. Not only is it a lower bound, it's the greatest lower bound is guaranteed by the uh, Cauchy Schwartz result. Okay, folks. So the circle, the circle response is the answer. This expression is minimal uh, at a value of one fifth. Notice we didn't have to calculate X, Y, and Z. Now there's a way to do that too. It's based on the proof of this. I won't mess with what these values are, but you, there is a way to find out what the values of X, Y, and Z are. It's not particularly difficult, but in the name of brevity, I'll just go ahead and stop right here. Let me know what you think. And uh, again, uh, for those of you who are geometrically inclined, this uh, I'm almost certain, okay, this is certainly the equation of a plane right in three space in the XYZ plane, this would be, this would describe a sphere, not a circle in three space. And so you can think of tangent planes here, rather than, rather, rather than tangent lines and circles, you can think of tangent planes and spheres here. It's kind of cool. I would like to see that worked out. If any of y'all are interested, that would be a fun thing to do, to actually see the plane touching the sphere. And then that would correspond to, I guess, where the thing was meeting out somewhere, you know. Uh, just the, the 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 spatial equivalent of differential calculus, you know. All right, thanks, y'all. Let me know what you think.